Today I am going to explain a Hong Kong Chinese culinary drama film called, Cook Up a Storm. The movie centers around a famous local restaurant named The Seven, in Spring Avenue, Hong Kong. The talented chef at the restaurant, Sky Ko, specializes in southern-style cuisine. A TV host features the 30-year-old restaurant and its chef on a culinary program. Sky shows his talent on national television, even though he is already popular as the best chef in all of Spring Avenue. Alongside him, his friend Yuni is also introduced to the people. She usually manages the financial aspect of the restaurant. Sky is very definitive about the quality of food and time they provide to their customers which is part of the reason why their restaurant is so popular. Most of the time, it is so packed that a queue of people has to line up outside the restaurant. That day, a rude customer barges in after breaking the queue. Sky refuses to serve him even though the customer boasts about the power and money he possesses. Before leaving, the man laughs at their small restaurant and discloses that his boss has invited a world-class chef to open a three-star restaurant opposite theirs. The thought scares Uni but she dismisses it as a bluff. Meanwhile, in France, the crowned king and queen are welcoming their newborn son. They hold a massive ball to celebrate the birth and invite a world-class chef to cook for the guests. We are introduced to the said chef, Paul Arne. He is a Michelin-starred Korean chef trained in France. Paul has a special way of cooking that doesn't see boundaries in one particular style. He loves to mix cuisines from different countries and hence create innovative dishes. For the chef special, he presents the queen with a dessert that looks like a red egg but is filled with mango puree and coconuts. The dish is inspired by the tradition that symbolizes red eggs as a blessing to the newborn. The delicious dish and the meaning behind it touch the royals' hearts and they applaud Paul's brilliant work. After the successful ball, he and his assistant Mayo return to the restaurant that they currently work in. The owner and their co-workers welcome them with cheers, congratulating them on their success. The owner also announces that they have promoted Paul to the executive chef of the whole Art Nouveau franchise. The step is a huge one for him. However, to everyone's surprise, he declines the offer. Paul wants to return to Asia and pursue a bigger and higher ambition. He and Mayo have been invited by a Chinese businessman who wants to open a three-star restaurant. The staff supports their decision and wishes them farewell. Back in Spring Avenue, one of Sky's regular customers informs him that the rumor about a new restaurant being established is true. The news is bittersweet for Sky because he wants his small colony to develop, but a new restaurant would mean fewer customers and more competition. When Sky was 10 years old, his father used to hit him and insult him for having no talent as a cook. One day, he abandoned Sky and chose to pursue his culinary career over being a father with the excuse that Sky couldn't even make a decent bowl of noodles. Ever since, Uncle Seven, the master and owner of the Seven Restaurants, has taken care of him. He also taught Sky everything that he needed to know about food, unlike his father. Currently, Sky hasn't met his father in over 20 years and has no plan to reconcile with him. The following morning, Paul arrives in Hong Kong and goes to the market in search of a big group of fish. The seller only has one of Sitch and decides to sell it to Sky, knowing that he will cook it better. Paul argues, insisting that a shopkeeper shouldn't be biased. They get into a small argument before the seller cuts the fish in half for both of them. A few weeks later is the opening ceremony of the three-star restaurant named Stella that is right in front of the seven restaurant. The chairman and manager of the Lee Management Group arrive as the first guests of the restaurant and are welcomed by Paul and Mayo. At the same time, the people from the seven restaurants start announcing about different discount offers they are offering for the next week. When the security guards from the Stella restaurant try to stop them, a conflict arises. This attracts Paul and the guests' attention, making them come out to see what the fuss is about. When the conversation gets heated, Mayo suggests they hold a competition to see which cook is better. Sky and Paul recognize each other from the market and accept the challenge. They decide to indulge in a fish cutting competition. 
Paul goes first and skillfully picks all the ribs of a fish in no time following that, Sky takes the same fish and cuts it into even pieces in under a minute. The crowd claps for him and even Paul is impressed. The chairman of the Lee group has to announce the results. In an unbiased way, he claims that the true results will only be announced in the International Chef Challenge competition that both chefs have taken part in. He also announces that he is planning to take over the entire Spring Avenue colony to remove all the buildings and modernize it. If Sky wins in the competition, the chairman is willing to withdraw his plan to preserve the heritage of the colony. However, if Paul wins, he will go through with the plan. With the future of the entire colony in his hands, Sky feels pressured, still, he is determined to do his best. For the next few days, the number of customers at the Seven restaurant decreases. Uni is worried that might soon go out of business but Sky assures her that is not possible. He gives her an example of escargots and field snails, claiming that there will always be people who like one more than the other. They do not have to change their food to be better than the Stella restaurant, because there will always be customers who like one better. The following day, Sky is met with disappointment when he goes to the market and finds out the Stella restaurant has bought all the good fish. The day is frustrating for the workers in the Seven restaurant until they find out that Sky has been selected for the culinary competition. He will soon go against Paul to be selected for the semi-finals. But then, it is also announced that the victor will have to go against the two-time winner of the competition, Mountain Co. Sky is shocked to see that his father has achieved the success he wanted to. He is now even more determined to reach the finals and compete against him. That night, Uncle Seven returns home from his trip and calls Sky to a pub. Excited to meet him after long, Sky runs to the location but finds his father with Uncle Seven. Mountain bluntly says that he still doesn't believe in Sky and doesn't regret leaving him for his career. The words are the most hurtful things Sky has ever heard but he hides his pain with anger. He promises to win the competition and prove that being a good cook doesn't require being a bad person like Mountain is. On the day of the culinary duel, the contestants get 90 minutes to cook a dish of their choice and present it. Sky makes a traditional salt-baked duck while Paul makes a foie gras sorbet. The entire 90 minutes are intense as both cooks show great expertise while cooking their respective dishes. Sky cuts the duck's inside with little to no effort and pulls it out efficiently, making the audience gasp. In the end, he bakes the duck in salt and breaks the additional layer to reveal a well-cooked duck with vegetable stuffings. The judges try it and seem to be more impressed by Sky's duck than Paul's sorbet. When it is time to vote, Paul receives three nines and a whopping 10 out of 10, scoring a total of 37 points. Right after, Sky receives two tens from the first two judges. The third one gives him nine, but the last judge only gives him an eight. Because both chefs tied in points, the head judge makes the executive decision to make Paul the winner because his dish presentation was superior to Sky's bland plating. Although Paul's victory should have solidified his abilities as a cook, things do not go as expected. While celebrating their victory, the manager informs Paul that he wants to replace him with Mayo to compete in the finals. According to him, a woman is far more appealing in the media than a man. When Paul tries to defend his position as head chef, Mayo exposes that he has difficulty tasting certain flavors like saltiness. For the past few months, he has been using a notebook containing all his recipes to cook and can do nothing on his own. Mayo also discloses that she never wanted to befriend Paul and only sided with him to surpass him as a chef. Betrayed and hurt, Paul storms out of the restaurant to never look back. That night, Sky bumps into a drunk Paul in front of an event stadium. They forget about their rivalry for a few minutes and share their past and troubles. Paul reveals that his father was a great chef and his dying wish was for Paul to be like him. Sky also tells him about his and Mountain's relationship. After the conversation, they find mutual respect for each other. They also throw bottles of alcohol at Mountain's picture on a billboard while cursing at him in Korean. Paul doesn't want to give up on the competition yet. 
Since he cannot take part as a representative of the Stella restaurant, he decides to participate as an individual chef after debunking the rulebook. He even asks Sky to join him for the semi-finals. At the same time, the manager of Stella is at the Seven restaurant urging Uncle Seven to sign away his restaurant to the Lee Group. Right then, Paul and Sky appear and announce their partnership. Paul also reminds the manager that as the winner of the competition, he is eligible to compete at the championship. For the next few weeks, Sky and Paul work and train together. They try each other's style of cooking and reach a common ground of modernization of traditional cuisine. The semi-final of the culinary competition takes place at the Studio City Casino in Macau. The one to win the round will have to face the current god of cookery, Mountain Co. The competition starts and Sky and Paul use both their culinary strengths to compete against four other great chefs from different parts of the world. Somehow, the Lee group has also made Mayo take part in the competition. She cooks extra carefully to prove that she is better than Paul. She makes an oyster dish with frozen foam that the judges compliment initially, but on being served, they seem to find it mediocre. Meanwhile, Paul and Sky create a deconstructed Mapo tofu. Sky's sense of taste helps determine the flavor of the ingredients while Paul's understanding of the culinary artistry helps with the techniques and processes used. Together, they create a traditional dish with a modern design. The judges complement the dish in detail, thoroughly impressed by it. In the end, they win the competition and reach the finale. As everyone cheers, Paul looks at Mayo who stands with her head low, ashamed that she betrayed him and couldn't prove herself. For the final round, only one of the chefs can compete against Mountain. Paul thinks that because of his lack of taste, he is ineligible to participate. He also knows that Sky's desire to beat Mountain is a very personal one, hence he suggests Sky face Mountain in the finals. The following day, Sky stands face to face with his father. The competition asks them to cook anything they want in an hour. The father and son do not share words before the competition starts. Mountain immediately begins to cook but Sky is distracted by his thoughts. He remembers how Mountain abandoned him and how much the people in the neighborhood mean to him. The thoughts overwhelm Sky and he can hardly focus. To get him to come back to his senses, Mountain splashes water at his son's face. The action brings Sky back and he immediately starts making dough. By the end of the hour, Mountain makes an aesthetic sugar display of molten lava with a flour on top. In contrast, Sky's dish is a bit more simple but personal. He makes noodles, like the noodles that Mountain made years ago before abandoning his son. The judges try Mountain's dish and are impressed by it. However, Sky never hands his dish to them. Instead, he gives the bowl of noodles to Mountain. Mountain eats it and is moved as he remembers what the noodles represent. At last, he has no choice but to acknowledge his son's brilliance in culinary art. The winner of the competition is unclear because the judges never got to taste the food. In the following scene, we see a crowd has gathered outside the Seven restaurant to celebrate the Chinese New Year. They enjoy a meal cooked by Sky and Paul together as a family. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.